If you have your Bible, we're going to start uh, a four-week study this morning. Four-week sermon series is, is what most people call it, so we'll call it a sermon series. We're going to be uh, studying for the next four weeks uh, on the book of Jonah in the Old Testament, okay? The book of Jonah, if you would find your place there in the book of Jonah. Uh, we're going to start by uh, this week talking about how there's a Jonah in all of us, okay? Those of you that heard, uh, have heard the, the old story of, of Jonah and the big fish, uh, we, we learn one of those stories when, from the time we're, we're young, being brought up in church, that, that, uh, that, that Jonah was, we're going to read the story this morning, that he was swallowed up by a big fish. And, uh, and that's what we're going to learn about is, is how, why that happened and how Jonah is just like us. Okay, there's a little bit of Jonah in all of us this morning. The next week we're going to talk about Jonah praying. Jonah takes some time to pray while he's inside of that big fish in the big belly of that, that fish. Uh, and then the next week after that, uh, we're going to talk about his obedience when he was given a second chance that he uh, answered the call that God placed on his heart. And then lastly, we're going to talk about his anger, how he got angry at God because of uh, basically the grace that he showed uh, to, to the Ninevite people. But uh, today we're going to start, we're going to introduce Jonah, the story of him and the big fish. And uh, maybe it's a story that you've heard before, but uh, the, the, the gist of everything that I want to talk about this morning is for us to recognize that there is a Jonah in all of us, okay? Every single one of us, there's a Jonah, and I'm going to try to show that to you this morning in ways that, that Jonah relates to us uh, uh, in our everyday life, okay? So I'm going to start by reading Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1, starting in verse 1, and I'm going to start, stop at verse 3, and then we'll have a word of prayer, uh, and, and then we're, I'm going to introduce you four things that uh, we can learn from Jonah and how it applies to us this morning, okay? So this is what the Bible says, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa and uh, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Okay. So let's take a moment. Let's pray this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. God, we pray that this word would penetrate our hearts this morning, that we would see, God, uh, us in Jonah. God, the, the call that you placed on his life, God, is the same call that you placed on our lives as believers in you. Father, I pray that, that, uh, that we would learn this morning from Jonah. God, that we should, God, be obedient to whatever your call may be. Father, and I pray for those this morning that they know that there is something that you want for them to do, but for whatever reason, we get held back. Father, and I pray today that you would loosen those chains, God, that you would cause us to, to let go of whatever it is we hold on to, God, to serve you with our full and whole heart. God, may we learn a story from Jonah this morning, God, a story of, of God, obedience and how we are this very man today. Father, I, I pray that you would speak to our hearts, and I pray that you would reveal truth to us and allow us to respond at the end of the service this morning. Everything we do, we do to honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, so if I had a title of the sermon this morning, there, there's a Jonah in all of us, okay? There's a little bit of Jonah in all of us, and I'm going to share four ways that, that we're going to get to that. But before I do, I just want to know, I want you to know, the big main character of this book is Jonah himself. Jonah is known as the reluctant prophet, okay? The reluctant prophet because God, as we read in that first verse, God spoke to him and told him to go to a, a specific place. That place is called Nineveh. And Nineveh and Israel hated each other. If there was any bigger uh, enemy, I, I don't know who it was, Florida State, Miami, I guess, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of rivalry, right? You guys don't like each other. Uh, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. We, we, we don't like each other that much, right? But, well, I put that stuff aside for a little bit. But uh, Israel and Nineveh 
did not like each other. They were enemies of each other. And so for God to speak to Jonah and say, you go and you speak, you preach against them, <laughs> it's a pretty big task, okay? And, and so that's, that's kind of just, the, just the, the basic of what I want you to understand before we start to look at these uh, four points, okay? The Jonah and all of us. In verse 1 it says this, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. This morning, if you were honest with yourself, you've heard God speaking to you recently, okay? God's maybe challenging you to do something that you wouldn't normally do. And you toy with the decision in your mind. Maybe it was something that you heard this past week in revival. And then I, I, the, the week that we had in revival was, was awesome. And I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed every night of us just coming together and, and, and letting the word of the Lord just lead us, guide us, change us, move us. Uh, that, that was a powerful thing. And... Maybe that week, this past week, or maybe even since then, God is speaking to you about something. The word of the Lord spoke to Jonah and told him to do something. And, and, and that's how we're going to get to Jonah is, is just like us, okay? So the number one thing I want us to learn this morning, the first thing I should say, is God will often ask you to do things you don't want to do, okay? God oftentimes will ask you to do something you don't want to do. Well, how do you get that? Well, listen to what he said in verse number two. This is what is it, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, and then verse two says this. It says, go to the great city of Nineveh, and these are big words, preach against it. <laughs> preach against it because their wickedness has come up before me. Those words, preach against it, those are some hard, hard words. And uh, because, just like what I said before, they, he, he told him to, to, to go to the Ninevites. And the Ninevites were the worst enemy of Israel. And, 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 and I want you to think about, in the Old Testament, there's this man named Isaiah, okay? Isaiah was told to speak against the enemy. But the difference between Jonah and Isaiah is Isaiah was told to speak against the enemy, but do it in Israel. We can do that, Right? Speak against the enemy, but stay around where you're safe. It's equivalent to this. It's equivalent to, uh, say, you, you're, you're telling other people that you beat the stuffing out of a bully, right? You, 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 you smack the bully right in the face. You, you were tired of, of all his talk, and, and, and you could stand in your, your own yard, surrounded by your brothers, surrounded by all your cousins. You know the ones that, that are going to throw down with you. Something's going to happen, right? You can do that. You can tell everyone, I beat that bully up because he talked too much. That's what Isaiah did. He spoke against the enemy, but he did it in his own yard. Now Jonah, on the other hand, Jonah was called to go to the bully's yard all by himself and speak against them. A little harder to do, ain't it? <laughs> that, that, that was not, it's not as fun to do as Isaiah's call. Jonah's call was to say, well, golly, all by myself? Are, are you sure about this? You, you want me to go and you want me to preach? All by myself. No backup. No cousins. No brothers. All by myself. God, are you crazy? <laughs> now, how many of you this morning, you know God's calling you to do something? You know he is calling you to step out by faith and, and, and to remove yourself from a situation or to step into a situation which will glorify him. But you're reluctant because... I'm going to be by myself. Some of you, you maybe have answered the call before that, that God told you to do something. He told you to speak out for him. He told you to glorify his name. And that's exactly what you've done. And you've come to realize that when you speak, uh, speak out for the Lord, Satan sends people, right? <laughs> he will send people to chop you down. He will send people to discourage you. you will send, he will send people to, to make sure that you don't talk about the good things that God wants you to speak about. There is a time when God will ask you to do something you don't want to do. The question is, do you go to your Nineveh or do you flee to your Tarshish. 
That was the decision that Jonah had. Do I go to my Nineveh or do I flee to my Tarshish? And what we're going to learn this morning is he made a decision. What was his decision? Well, let's read. The second thing I want you to uh, know about Jonah this morning and his story is this. Point number two, you can always find a boat sailing in the wrong direction. Okay? You can always find a boat that's going the opposite way that God's calling you to go. Okay? That's what happened here in verse number three. It says this. It says, but Jonah ran away from the Lord. And he headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and he sailed for Tarshish. Why? To flee from the Lord. To flee from the Lord. And and I want you to grasp, I, 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 I think that the Bible is written that way for a reason, okay? To flee from the Lord. You notice he wasn't fleeing from the calling. Because if you know about Jonah, Jonah was already preaching. Okay, Jonah, this, Jonah, this wasn't God's call to say, hey, you need to step up and preach. No, this, he was already preaching. He just told them to go somewhere he didn't want to go <laughs> to preach. Same way with us this morning is you may be a believer in Jesus Christ. You may be sharing Jesus Christ with people that you know and love, but it's when God calls you to share it with people that you don't know and you don't love. <laughs> that's when it gets tough, right? That's where, that's where all these emotions come through my head. And I, I say, man, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. And just like Jonah, you can find that boat that's going to sail over there to Tarshish instead of over here to Nineveh. We tend to go the opposite way that God wants us to go. And this morning, that, that is, that's my prayer. Well, well the, the way that it's written, it says that he is fleeing. He's going, going to go from the Lord's presence. You know what Jonah's doing? He's actively trying to ditch the Lord. Why? Because he understands this truth. He understands that the only way to escape obedience to the Lord's command would to be ex- to escape the Lord altogether. Okay? That's what we're doing. When we disobey, we are running from the Lord altogether. We're not just running from a calling. <laughs> we're running from the Lord. That's what Jonah did. And and many times, if we were honest, that's what we do. We're guilty. There's a little bit of Jonah in all of us. This morning, God may be calling you to do something. You see, he told him to go to Nineveh the same way that the Lord has given us a great commission. You know what that great commission is? Go ye therefore and baptize, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, sharing with them everything that I've shown you. That's the Josh Leading Fox version. That's not word for word, okay? So don't look that up. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a paraphrase. But when we are slow to tell others about Jesus or we don't tell them at all, we're doing the very thing that Jonah did. And what was he doing? He was rebelling, disobeying. When we're not willing to share the goodness of Jesus Christ with someone else, we're just like Jonah. Let me ask you this morning, how many of you, you got a favorite gas station? Anybody got it? You got it. You go to the same gas station at least once a week. Just a couple of us uh, all over the room. Okay, now we're being honest. All right. We all go to that one gas station. And, and it seems like when we go in, we, we have a relationship with that one teller or the, the one cashier that's there. It's easy to make the small talk with them, right? I want you to do something this week. I want you, if you go to that same gas station and they, they look at you and they say, how was your weekend? What do you usually say? Well, it's good. You know, I just hung out with family. Throw them a curveball this week, okay? How, how, was your, how was church this week? Or, well, how was your weekend, man? Church was awesome, right? Jesus spoke to my heart all week during this, this revival. Share with them. Just mention the name of Jesus. Because it's easy to do the small talk, right? But when God calls us to to share that great commission, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, I pray that we're willing to speak up for him. It may be a gas station. It may be the dry cleaners. It may be you've been going to the same mechanic since the the time that you got your first car. (laughs) And maybe you've never talked about Jesus to them. 
I pray that you throw a little curveball to him this week, okay? Because I want you to think about it. There's always a boat that can go in the opposite direction. God's calling you to share the good news of his son, Jesus. You know the port's down the road, and you can disobey God. But my prayer is that we would move the same way that we move when I want the Lord to heal a pain in my body. Think about it. When you got pain in your body, what do you do? You run to the Lord and you cry out to the Lord. You want God to have mercy on your children. Man, you run to the Lord and you cry out to the Lord. But when he says, talk about me, man, we do it cautiously. We do it slowly. We do it hesitantly. And to be honest, sometimes we don't do it at all. But I pray that you're not looking for that boat that's going the other way. That you're looking for forward to going to Nineveh, right? No matter how big those Ninevites are, I'm going to tell them about Jesus. I'm going to be obedient to what the Lord Jesus wants me to do. And I pray that that, that is our, our heart this morning because Jonah, he didn't go to Nineveh. He got on the boat. Down in Joppa, found a port, went to Joppa, got on a boat, and, and it was headed towards Tarshish. But something happened on the way there, okay? Something happened, and it's the third point that I want to talk about this morning. When we disobey, number three, God may send a storm to grab your attention. God may send a storm to grab your attention. Listen to these verses, okay? They're going to kind of jump around, but it's all in Jonah chapter 1. Just the ones that, that I want to point out this morning associated with this, this point. Verse number 4 says this. It says, Then the Lord sent. Who sent it? The Lord sent a great wind on the sea. And such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Verse number uh, 9 and 10, it says this. It says, Jonah answered. They asked him, who are you? Why, why aren't you praying to your God? And Jonah answered. He said, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. And the Bible says this terrified all the other people on the boat. And they asked him, what have you done? <laughs> they knew that he was running away from the Lord because he already told them so. And finally, verse 12, it says, this was Jonah's response. Jonah said, pick me up and throw me into the sea. And it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Okay, so we learned that, that Jonah got on the boat towards Tarshish. He didn't go to Nineveh. He went the other way that God wanted him to go. The Bible says he got on the boat. And as they began to sail, there was other passengers on this boat, other people on this boat that, that, that uh, maybe they had small talk. And so somewhere along the road, Jonah told them about what he was doing. God told me to go here. I didn't want to go. So I'm here going the opposite direction, right? Bible says that on the journey, wind started blowing. Waves started coming. Lightning started crashing. Maybe the rain started falling. And this once so quiet trip on the up opposite direction of the Lord, it turned into a storm that God had brought to get the attention of Jonah. I told you to do something, but you're not doing it. God may send a storm to grab your attention. And I want you to notice something about the storm. You notice that the storm, it didn't just bother Jonah, right? It didn't just uh, affect him. The storm brought damage and danger to everyone else around him. Sometimes in life, when God brings the storm, it doesn't just affect you. It affects your family. It affects your friends. Sometimes God may send a storm to get your attention when we are being disobedient to God. 
And I pray that it doesn't get to that point that we would be obedient the moment we have an opportunity to be obedient because what do we say in the church? We say delayed obedience is disobedience. <laughs> when you don't do it, when he tells you to do it, you're still disobeying. Partial obedience is disobedience. When I'm kind of doing what God wants me to do, but I'm still holding a little bit back, right? When we disobey, God may send a storm. And that storm, it might not just affect you. It may affect those that are closest to you. But I want you to know something this morning is that the Lord doesn't have to send a storm. He doesn't have to send, uh, put, an, put us in an accident. He can simply put life in neutral until we decide that we're going to go uh, proclaim the gospel no matter the size or power of the Ninevites that we face. So he may not bring a big storm. He just may put everything in your life at a standstill. That's when we tend to say, God, where are you at? God, I, I can't feel you. God, are, are you here? I know I, this, I, I, know I haven't obeyed you, but, but don't leave me. He may put your life in neutral and you stand there until you make a decision you know what? I'm going to do what God told me to do. Storm may come. And I know people don't like to hear that. But God punishes sin, okay? <laughs> Disobedience is sin. And when we disobey God, we invite the wrath of God into our life. And he may send a storm to get your attention. He might not, but he may send a storm. The last thing I want to talk about this morning is this. When that storm came, point number four, Jonah's worst nightmare was exactly what he needed. Okay. Jonah's worst nightmare. What was his worst nightmare? He was getting thrown off of a boat into the raging waters in the middle of a storm. Who wants to do that? <laughs> that ain't fun. But that's what happened to Jonah. They threw him over the ship, threw him overboard, threw him into the water. This is what the Bible says in 15 through 17 of Jonah 1. It says, then they took Jonah, they threw him overboard. And the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Now this is the part I want you to pay attention to. This is Jonah's part. Now the Lord provided. Man, isn't that crazy? In the middle of this storm, in the middle of the worst place he wanted to do, uh, wanted to be, it says the Lord provided even in the storm. Provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. It's something to think about that God even provided in the storm. Even in the place where Jonah didn't want to be, that God provided for his need. The storm served its purpose. Because whenever what we're going to talk about next week is that when he was in the belly of that fish, he didn't have anything to do but get down and talk to God as if God was there next to him. <laughs> Sometimes that storm will take you to the place where you feel like you're all alone and the only thing you can do is talk to God. Sometimes things bring us to our knees. Sometimes that's the only way you get to your knees. When that storm comes and you realize your need for God. Jonah's worst nightmare was exactly what he needed and sometimes that's exactly what we need in the middle of the storm. It's going to take that for you to get in the presence of God and acknowledge that I have a need for him right now. If you're in a storm this morning, maybe that's you. Maybe you're just like Jonah. There's a purpose for the storm. And my prayer is that you would seek God in the middle of the storm, even if you're there this morning. Because maybe you don't realize it now, but, but, but I pray that God will show you sometimes that this storm is exactly what you need to sit down and be honest with God. <laughs> that's what Jonah needed. 
Otherwise, he'd continue to go around disobeying God and doing what he wanted to do. When God sends the storms to us, if we don't have the storm, we're going to continue to live a life of rebellion that, that we love. It's sometimes not until the storm comes that we realize that I need God. I need him. I'm tired of this. Maybe that's where you're at this morning. You, you, you're in that place and, and you understand your need for the most high. God may send a storm because that storm is exactly what you need. You see, a lot of people, when they talk about the story of Jonah, they, they relate it to, uh, to a preacher. I, I related a lot of times to my life as, as a preacher that, that there, there was times I, I knew, if I was honest, I knew from the time that I was about 16 years old that God wanted me to be a preacher. 16. You know when I surrendered my life to the pulpit ministry, to, to preaching ministry, to being a, a pastor? You know how long it took me? I knew when I was 16, I didn't surrender until I was 21, okay? Five years. I rebelled for five years. I disobeyed for five years, I should say. But you know what happened, right? Storm came and got my attention. A storm came into my life, and I, 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 I realized, you know what, I... The way I'm living, I'm just doing nothing but wasting my time. I'm making no impact on eternity. I'm only doing things that I want to do. I'm pleasing myself and pleasing my friends. And, and, and I, I, at the time, I was okay with that. Until that storm came and I realized my need for God. Because even in the middle of the storm, in the darkest day of my life, that just like that scripture said, in that storm, God provided. Stood next to a graveside. And God provided peace. Provided a second chance for myself. He provided his Holy Spirit to comfort me the way that nothing else in this world could. And you know what it took for me to realize that he was there? It was a storm. And I pray that you don't wait until the storm rages in your life to come to Jesus. I, don't, I pray that you don't uh, wait until the storm comes to, to step out further and do what he's calling you to do. Because just like Jonah, he was already preaching. He was already doing the will of God. You may be saved this morning, but God may be telling you to step out into deeper waters. Trust me. Step out in deeper waters and, and share my name with your neighbor or your friends. Step out and trust me is what he's telling us. And maybe this morning you're not willing to do that. And so what are we doing? We're disobeying. You see, there's a Jonah in all of us. We have a choice this morning. Nineveh, Tarshish. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know if I am or not, but Tarshish. Nineveh or Tarshish? <laughs> now that's all I think about in my head, but that's your choice. T-Town, that's what we'll call it. Nineveh or T-Town. <laughs> we, we have a choice. Obedient or do it my way. My prayer this morning is that when we're faced with an opportunity to obey God and show him that I trust him, that you would be willing to do it at that moment. God may be speaking to you this morning. He may be calling you to do something that in your ordinary self you don't want to do. And you're going to see that there is an easy opportunity for me to go outside and do the things that I want to do instead of getting on my, my boat and traveling to Nineveh. I can go the other way. When we do that, sometimes God will bring a storm to you. And I pray that it doesn't take a storm for you to get right with God. Because sometimes those storms hurt people. Not just myself, but they hurt other people around me. And I, that's the last thing that we want is to hurt others. 
But sometimes maybe it takes the storm for us to realize, you know what? I am doing things on my own, and it is not glorifying God. Some of us need the storm. It's exactly what you need so that your eyes get focused back on the Lord. You and me, we're Jonah this morning. We have a choice. And I pray that we choose to be obedient to God. Because it affects you, it also affects your family, your loved ones, those that you cherish. When you would bring everyone close to the Lord, I want you to know you will feel the presence of God in your life. But it's something we have, to, we have to want to do. I used to not understand that saying. Something my, my college wrestling coach said all the time. He said, Josh, what do you want to do? I want to win a national championship. All right, and then go do it. Okay, that sounds easy. What, how, what do I do? You got to want it. <laughs> you want a close relationship with God. You got to want it, and you got to go after it. And I pray that that's the choice we make this morning. I'm going to invite Miss Sandra to come and, and the worship team that wants to come and help her this morning. And I pray that, that you may be in that place this morning. You realize you are Jonah. Maybe God's calling you to do something and you're just hesitating about doing it. I pray that you wait no longer. That the Lord would God, give you that opportunity to step out by faith this morning and trust him. Step out to that deeper water and trust him. He's going to provide even in the storm. If it is a storm present in your life today, step out because he will, uh, he will uh, supply your need if you would trust him. He may be calling you this morning. I pray that that call doesn't go unanswered. That you're obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would, let's stand together and let's close with prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Father, I pray for each of us, God, as an individual, or the, the heart of each of us, God. Only we know what you're calling us to do. God, and I pray that for whatever reason we hold back, for whatever reason we, we are afraid to step out. Father, I pray that you would remove that doubt.